Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're the Champong family and we make vlogs about our life in Ghana. We have to put Ghana on the map. <laughs> yes, <of> <laughs> one of those two. Welcome back to the channel. You, you, I'm talking to you. You came here three times already. <laughs> I beg, subscribe to the channel. Huh? Subscribe. Like a new year voice. <laughs> wow. Thank you very much for clicking. Make sure you also give a thumbs up. So this is the video you guys all have been waiting for. We are leaving Ghana. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yes, we are. But don't be saddened. I mean, we had a good time. Yeah, and we learned a lot. We learned a lot. I mean, a lot of experiences. Yes, yeah. especially for you guys, you are new to the channel. Let me recap it for you very quickly. We came to Ghana for a sabbatical. Initially, we came just to stay here for like eight months to a year. Yeah. But then COVID hit. COVID hit. And we're in a lockdown and we started really thinking about which choice are we going to make in life yeah. are we going back and returning to the netherlands or are we going to stay in ghana and live here because we really enjoyed it yeah. and we decided to stay here and do that with all the challenges that that came across, came across our, across our, our yeah. path <laughs> which i really liked i mean uh, i like challenges in life mm. and we've grown a lot yeah. as a family but also as individuals yeah definitely we did we learned a lot mm -hmm. but i think for me at a certain point the stress was just taking over the happiness of being here mm. i mean there was stress from uh the school stress from my house financial stress mm. stress from people not understanding what you want stress from day-to-day -day life stress from traffic and then <laughs> i was just so stressed i really needed a vacation but then yeah. we were in the midst of choosing what we needed to do i needed to be there for the family and it was a lot. It was a lot. So guys, I bet you're wondering like, ah, what is Anna wearing? Who did you wear clothes? No, <laughs> we're at Labadi Beach Hotel having like a, a, a very family, chill family Sunday with yeah, friends. Yeah, with friends. And uh, families. And um, our final goodbye. Yeah, it's our final uh, goodbye with we them. We made a lot of friends. Yeah. Eh? And I, I appreciate everybody we I'm met. I'm going to miss you guys. And, um, we're still keeping uh, contact look to be honest it's, it's like six hours away from amsterdam we can it's always like, return if i if i if i go to Buzwa, it's even further sometimes <laughs> true than going true. back to the netherlands true. so it's not even that far yeah and to be honest probably we'll be here very, very soon, soon. <laughs> the number one reason we are leaving i think is because we couldn't find a home that we all felt comfortable in yeah exactly yeah. we've stayed uh, in total in three houses yeah uh three yeah. Oh yeah, we yeah. stayed in tree houses. The, we moved second, three times. That is second, a lot. The second house where we stayed in is the big house where we lived the majority of our time yeah. in Ghana. Yeah. Was good, was very comfortable, especially Bruh. when when it came to prior to COVID. Okay. People were okay. coming. When we had family <laughs> over, it was really comfortable. But I miss the responsibility of houses, right? I mean, if you're a landlord, I feel it's your responsibility to take care of the exterior of the house. Mm -hmm. And not, as, as somebody who's renting, you don't expect to deal with the AC not working, plumbing not working, this not working, that, that not working. working yeah. That is a lot of stress. Yeah. And I feel a house needs to de-stress you. When you come home from a long day of work or from a vacation, that is like your comfortable zone where you come back and you're home. Exactly. And that is what I missed. And I think really did did a number on ev everybody on of everybody. us uh, yeah. our mental state I not mean, having that the, the house was it was great to have a pool especially for uh, kids especially during the uh, lockdown yeah um and the time the kids couldn't go, go to school because of the government shutting down uh, all schools for like nine nine or eleven months yeah i think that so that time we're really blessed that, that helped out a lot in the activities for us to make things durable yeah um but then again there were a lot of flaws in the heart and at a certain point you just fed up with it, which eventually led uh, for us to make a decision to leave the house and uh, move, to an, move apartment. to an apartment. Yeah, because we because, thought yeah, apartment would be more comfortable. Would be more comfortable. Looks very and much like it is, it is. It is. It is more yeah. comfortable. Then uh, we're, we're a family of four, and Micah really couldn't cope with, uh, yeah. with living in an apartment. He yeah. felt like really locked up. Yeah. Michael no just wants play. to run, he wants That's to play, no he wants to play football. When he comes home from school, he wants to take his energy out on mm -hmm. something. And there was no space for him to do that. Yeah. So that was stressing him and then also stressing me and Kevin and everybody in the house. Because 
at a certain point there's not so much to do in Accra. I no, mean, there's, seem... there's much to do, but then every time you have to figure out what you're going to do, and it, it's uh, keep in mind it always has to be somewhere else. Yeah. Not in your house or near your house, but somewhere further. Yeah. And at a certain moment, you just feel like, wow, why, why you are, have to think about are we traffic. going to do this every time? You have to know, like, okay, would he be? Would he be okay that he's he ha has he eaten in time before he goes to bed? So it's a lot of things you have to think about when you like want to bring your kid to soccer practice or something. It's it's, it's stressful. Yeah. 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 And the, so yeah, the house was I think the number one reason. Mm -hmm. The second reason for for me and I think the kids and maybe you as well was the school. So they've changed schools three times three in Ghana. Times. Yeah. We tried and. Um, let, let's say similar like a local semi, international, semi -international school, school. Yeah. yeah and then we tried an online school that was uh, with a teacher lockdown. coming home and us being like uh, teachers which we can't homeschooling. do homeschooling <laughs> yeah and well, then a lot of respect to the people who, who can do, who the do that yeah very i can i can teach my children a lot of things yeah except for the homeschooling part i feel like we're not fit my math to do those things and math i, no, I you, was you, so ashamed so <laughs> i was so ashamed i couldn't <coughs> help sophie like literally i needed my calculator <laughs> no but I, I feel like you just have to be do the things where you're good in and if somebody else is good in doing that thing get somebody to do those things exactly. and we got somebody to do those things but then the quality wasn't there yeah so then you start thinking about hmm is this good or not school. yeah and then eventually the lockdown was uh suspended yeah lifted Lift, yeah sorry lifted mm -hmm. and they could be enrolled into a, an international school yeah a proper international school yeah. which worked out very well for sophie jane well, there was one thing, right? The lockdown was lifted, but there were still a lot of restrictions. Yeah, of so course, they did not have course. any extracurricular activity. Yeah. And Sophie too really missed her piano, really missed all of the things that you do after school. So it's, Ballet, it was like yeah. only the, the educational part of school and not like the playing part wasn't there. Yeah. So that was something that they struggled with. And I think the school is okay for Sophie, but for Micah, he needs a different type of approach. So that was also a big stress factor because that comes with a lot of costs. Changing yeah. schools in Ghana is is not cheap. The um, Admission. admissions fee. Admission fee can be <laughs> between depending on the school, but if it's a, a well-established international school, it can be between uh, two thousand. Yeah, and I think until, six or seven thousand dollars. No, not seven thousand. Five. I'm, admission fees. Hey, I beg Lincoln is. But we're not. It's there. <laughs> it's there. It's but expensive. It's expensive. Let's expensive say that. Yeah. For just enrolling your kid in a school. Yeah. That doesn't. I'm not even talking about the school fees, fees. The school and fees. All the extra. But that's things. just entering a kid into a school, like yeah. typing in his, uh, his his name and, and date of birth <laughs> and those things. That's that amount. That's yeah. crazy if you think about it. Yeah. But then again. That's how things are set up here in Ghana because you're doing. You have to deal with private institutes. Yeah. And so, for me, that was also a big stress factor, mm -hmm. like trusting the system for them to be okay. Mm. Because for me, I, I can trust people. That is not the, the issue. But for me, it is so evident that schools in Ghana is a big business. So how do I trust a business that sees my child as a business? So that was difficult for yeah. me. Yeah. Because you, you always see like, are they putting the kids really as a priority? Yeah. Or... Are is the it, fees a priority? Is it, is it just collecting fees and making sure you manage everything until you have to renew? Yeah. I mean... Yeah, that was an, another stress factor. Yeah. And then I think the third stress factor was finances. Yeah. At one point, I think people underestimate Ghana is expensive. Ghana, Ghana can be really expensive. Oh, uh, let's redo that. Accra is expensive. Okay, yeah. Accra is expensive. Yeah. Uh, not not everywhere, but Accra can be very expensive. Very expensive. I mean, day to day costs. Yeah. Uh, doing things. Um, over time, people are enjoying it, but people are also paying the price for it. Um, people are rich. People <laughs> are no. I'm telling you, Kevin. People are rich in Ghana. Yeah. There's no comparison to Western world. The people that I've seen putting money down for a house within a week. <laughs> that, that's your mortgage, right? They just put it down. No, you shouldn't underestimate yeah, Africa. Yeah, but that's not for everybody. I mean, yeah, definitely not for <laughs> us. But I mean, all over the world, people all over the world can afford 
to pay a house at once and people can't afford that people get mortgages no, it depends no but listen we in the western world everybody mostly their house is mortgaged i haven't met a lot of people who just finished paying smart. off their house it's not smart to pay in uh, at once no, your house but here in africa if you see a house and, if you see a house, that's built, that's know, money. Yeah, that's no mortgage coming in between that. That's so true. it's a different type of well, money. Well, that's also changing. People are getting mortgages now. People were saying Arab money. I want to see the song <laughs> Africa money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, but no, on a serious yeah, no, note. Yeah, so financially, um, of course, we plan to stay here for like 8 to 12 months. Yeah. And um, We saved a lot we saved, for that. We saved a lot. And we even got to the point that we extended and... It was also still doable. It was, it was doable for us and of course YouTube also makes it very sustainable. I don't mind budgeting for things but then it needs to make sense. Yeah. And I feel like um, renting a place for a very for a period of like let's say three years or four years or five years um, won't make sense in my opinion. It would make sense if I bought land and started building. Yeah. Then it would make sense even for a shorter period. But especially with costs. the prices, right? Yeah. Because it's, there's nothing wrong with renting, and sometimes no, renting can be better. there's nothing wrong with renting. Renting can be sometimes better. Yeah, because we actually tried, right? For Sophie and Micah to be as comfortable as they could be, mm -hmm. they will be in East Legon, close to their school, where they have the freedom to go outside, maybe walk to school, or have a little bit more freedom, and only also that independence what yeah. Sophie was really missing. Yeah. But then East Legon buying land. <laughs> Charlie, it's, it's almost impossible. It's not impossible. We but are not I mean, only talking about the cost of the land, but also the fact that just people resell land and then eventually it's not yours anyway. Yeah, no, you have to do your due diligence very well. Yeah. Very well. Double check, even triple check. But then. Um, and do we just, want to live in East Legon just because the kids' school is there? Exactly. That, that is not my, my, yeah. my perfect place to live, but I also don't want to live too far of the kids' school because. No, you can't. You can't. Yeah, because, of because traffic it's traffic. And also, you don't, you don't want to frustrate yourself by dealing with traffic that much because we've done that in the beginning and it's, it's not doable. Yeah. So there's so many things you have to take into account for choosing a place where you're going to stay and especially when, when you're coming here with your family. Yeah. Um, which made it at the point that we started really doubting that is this still the thing we're going to do or are we going back to the Netherlands, regroup, rethink, focus again also make some investments uh, uh, prior to the investments here in, in, in Ghana before we return. Yeah, and come with a plan because I'm serious. More eh? structured plan. I'm very, very serious. <laughs> Accra is not a place for families when you don't have a solid, solid plan and a plan B. Hi, did you know we have a website where you can book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with us? For all your questions about coming or moving to Ghana, check www.achampongfamily.com. So yes, we are still doing the consultations. You can learn a lot from our mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the videos. I mean, yeah. we show everything as it is. Yeah. We're maybe for some people very direct. I'm not mm. sure, but that's how we are. We just say it as is. We're real. Yeah, we're keeping just keeping it real. It real. We're um, involving you in the yeah. process that we are also took. I mean, this was a journey we have taken together. And I'm really sad to disappoint you guys, but this is life. Yeah. This is how life goes. So I'm very happy if you stay around and come and see your life in the Netherlands. I'm so excited to show you guys. And if you're leaving, I'm sorry. And hopefully we'll return and soon. I'm sure they have a bunch of questions. So maybe I we should guess. do a Q&A, right? Yeah, why not? I'll also do a questions on the comment section and on our Instagram. So please make sure you follow us there. We gather them all together. And once we're settled, we'll answer all of your questions. So there you have it. That Champong family is leaving Ghana, but not for long. Hopefully it will be very short. Let's see. Life can uh, take you into all different type of uh, loops and, yeah. and, and paths. So. Who knows, we'll end up in Kenya. Could be. <laughs> see you in the next one, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye.